Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Hello, this is the Hot Topic Show. What do we do? We won't judge, but we're judging. It's going to be juicy. Today, let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. The Golden Globe nominations were announced yesterday. And Denzel Washington and Viola Davis, they both got nominated for their movie, Fences. Good for them. Good. Meryl Streep got her 30th nomination for her movie, uh, Florence Foster Jenkins. Taraji P. Henson was snubbed twice for Empire number one, and also for her movie, Hidden Figures. I don't recall that movie. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I was like, wait, I, well, how can you be nominated for something we haven't seen? Anyway, but she was snubbed, and uh, someone who's not happy and very vocal about getting snubbed is 50 Cent. Now, his show power, you have to admit, is the bee's knees. Okay. I love power, but it didn't get a single nomination. So 50 got caught in his feelings and he posted that the Golden Globes can suck. <laughs> and um, he, said, he went on to say something to the effect of, I accept my series power. It was not intended to be a signature show for the network, but it ended up being the highest rated show on the Stars Network. And so he said he's done promoting his show and um, he's looking for Kanan to be offed, to die. Now, Kanan, you know, that's his character. Please don't do it. Because when, when, he, when your character walks in the room 50, the whole screen lights up. Yeah. Like, like, don't do it, don't do it. I'm just saying, you know, don't make um, award committees um, make you walk away from your fan base, and that's me and them and a lot of other people. And awards are for people who I guess play by the rules. Now look, we went into 50's past. You know, um, 50 only won one Grammy. That's the only award. I mean, you know, he might, he might have gotten something, you know, from um, the Boys and Girls Club. You know, you get a lot of, <laughs> No, 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 those awards count. You get a lot of awards, you know, um, when you're a person in the public eye like this, but when you look at the big grand scheme of things, you look at the hierarchy of the awards and you say, well, what have my peers given me? I get it. You know, the community has given me, you know, you know, king of the block, you know, for 2016 and you have a nice award or whatever, but what about the rest of the Grammys? The only Grammy he won one time was with Dr. Dre and Eminem. So he's never been, just 50 winning on his own. And he's had, and we talk about 50 a lot here, but I have to say, he's real talented. Yeah. He, he really is. But, ugh. I've got the cold shoulder look and it's cold in here. Pardon my sniffles. Good morning, Suzanne. Oh, good morning, 
Wendy. How are you today? You know what? I have the cold shoulder look too. What are you doing I, with the cold I, shoulder? I, I know, but I covered mine up. I can't. I'm doing a show. I know. Well, you got it. You can borrow my jacket if you want. No, get, it's not oh. part of Memsor's holiday collection. Oh, okay. <laughs> like my wardrobe stylist, he's got a method to his madness. Mm -hmm. And happy holiday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we suffer for our craft and sometimes we don't get awarded for it 50 and that's mm. just the way the world works. <laughs> that is just the way the world works. You keep going with your character on, on, um, on your show and, and you keep that show going and forget those people at the Golden Globes. They obviously don't know what's really good. And by the way, 50s ex Vivica A. Fox will be here to expound on this and more January 3rd. <laughs> Don't need no hateration, <laughs> bitteration, or holleration in this divorce situation. But can do, you are behaving like less than an upstanding man. <laughs> Happy holidays, you all. <laughs> Cameraman just did a shot and almost everybody's in red. Aww. Yeah, the red crew, there you are. So Ken Do waits until Mary's on tour. Goodness only knows where in the world Mary is at this point. Is she in Australia? You know, is she in Africa? Is she, you know, in France? She's performing. Now here he goes to exact his revenge. The divorce is still on, and Mary reportedly just filed court documents asking Ken Do to hand over um, one of her Grammys and several cars that he allegedly is refusing to return. Oh. Now, here's my question. Ken Do, and I like you. What do you need with a Range Rover and two Mercedes? <laughs> And, a gra and one, of Mary's, one of nine Grammys that Mary has won. Now that might be the one that might have his name on it though. You know what I mean? So if I have eight other Grammys over here, let me tell you something, Mayor. And we're in 52 countries, so hopefully she's watching from wherever she is. Mayor, <laughs> come here, girl. <laughs> Number one, why don't you change the locks? to your house before you just, or hopefully you did, just so that he's not around pilfering and don't forget your garage door code, you change that too. And then you have somebody stay in your house, somebody who you implicitly trust that will not leave. They have to wear a catheter. They're not even, a <laughs> oh, please. You stay at my house while I'm going through a tumultuous divorce. I don't even want you moving from the front window. <laughs> so you put that catheter in. <laughs> You don't leave for the bathroom and you stay watching. And you call me as soon as you see Ken Do roll up, number one. Number two, Mary, if you've already, and you're so talented, nine Grammys, that might be the Grammy. Look, he was her manager. Although they were married, they have no children together. This divorce should be a little bit easier than the ones where children are involved, if you know what I'm saying. And I think you do. But divorces are also, excuse me, also um, very, very, um, they bring out the worst in everybody. And just talking about them brings out the worst in me. <laughs> so let me tell you something what I do with that Grammy. Okay. I'd come back to New York. I would take that Grammy and throw it through the window of the Range Rover. <laughs> and say, you can have the car and the Grammy and put that in your new little office. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I feel, I feel like, like can do, you know, you can do a new, <laughs> you, you can do a new life outside of Mary. 
and I know that you guys were together. It's cheesy that you're asking her allegedly to pay for your children that she's not even the mother of in some sort of way. Norman, what is what is what was that in the court we documents? We don't know how much it is, but it's uh, the kids are not hers, but they're 20 years old, 18 years old, and 17 years old. Hold on, let Norman talk. Hold hold on. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And we reported that like months ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is still going on and it's really, really disgusting. And uh, you know, my thought is if Ken Du was really good at managing Mayor and Mayor is this big Uber star, you can get another Mayor and maybe make somebody else, you know, maybe, maybe make another group or go on with your life, Ken Du, and be happy. And you know, your kids are grown and they don't need Mary money. And a man doesn't ask for two Mercedes and a Range. What do you want with that? Yeah, I'd throw all them keys, take this. And you know what? I'd make sure that they go down in the sewer. Yeah. Oh, look. You ever drop your keys in the sewer? It's the worst. Like I'm mad. You know what? I, uh, I was married long, to, uh, many, many years ago, only for five months, but it was a big wedding, it was a big to-do. I really did think that this was my Shangri-La, and when I got divorced, I was to the point where, I, like, I mean, he didn't qualify to take what he wants, but it's so freeing to leave behind the, the person <laughs> that you're about to leave behind that you almost kind of feel like, you know what, you want the house? Take that too. You want this? Take that too. And I'm gonna make sure the whole world knows, by the way, that you took all this stuff and that I walked out with nothing but my dignity. Yeah. And say, say. <laughs> she might wanna burn one of those cars in the driveway, like <laughs> Angela Bassett though. I'm like, I'm mad for Mary, only cause she's out of town, so it's not like she can fly back to you know, handle the situation. <sighs> Flip or flop, do you watch that? Yes. On HGTV? Yes. Do you know what's going on behind the scenes? Yes. Are you gagging? Yes. Do you think it's just for TV? No. This is the real deal, right you all? And we're watching it go down and HGTV is the only winner in this cause now I wanna watch more, I've only seen <laughs> I've only seen two episodes of this show. So, it stars um, uh, Tariq and Kristen, Christina. And um, they announced that they're separating. Well, apparently, back in May, what had happened was, <laughs> Christina was notified by a person in their bedroom with her husband, allegedly, which I don't know who goes in people's bedrooms. I'm not, it wasn't a sexual thing, but just, you know, who's in, why are you in my room? Anyway, notified that he was rummaging through a safe and allegedly put a gun in a backpack. So Christina wasn't in the bedroom, but she ran out of the house and called the cops. So the cops show up and when they get there, um, dude is in the woods. <laughs> with the backpack and the gun. <laughs> Tariq dropped the gun and said that he just wanted to blow off steam. Well, you know, I don't really know much. I don't rummage much around the woods in California. <laughs> but I know a lot of you all's dogs get eaten by coyotes. And there's rattlesnakes and there's, there's vermin. There, there's stuff going on. You might have to shoot something. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who's from California here? Do you need a gun to take a hike? <laughs> Authorities seize, oh, oh. Apparently you do. A part, uh, uh, the authorities seized uh, five guns in the house. Uh-huh. Uh, but nothing apparently was illegal. I mean, they were all registered, um, including an automatic rifle. Uh, she and he are now divorcing. The, the show that they do is a half hour show where he goes out and he gets houses about to be in foreclosure and then she comes in with a woman's touch, usually dragging the kids along. Kids are adorable. One is 15 months, the other one's like, yeah, uh-huh, kids are adorable. So then she shows up as the wife, you know, to um, you know, put her woman's touch. I think a chandelier should go there, there should be black and white tiles there, hardwood floor here. Like that, real cute. So cute that I had to, 
Like I, I like something a little bit, a little bit more ratchet on my team. <laughs> I've only seen the show twice, but I know the show. You know what I mean? But now all of a sudden they're ratcheting up <laughs> because um, they plan on keeping their professional thing going. And HGTV is going to capitalize on that into the eighth season. They're going into their eighth season. It'll be wonderful viewing for us. <laughs> I mean, don't you think that this would be must see TV? Yeah. Like. Like all of a sudden, right? What's the body language? Do the kids come along? Is he still carrying guns? Does she have a new boyfriend? Are the kids happy? It's just a mess. And some of my cynical people in um, my Hot Topics meeting, as a matter of fact, all of them except for me, they all think that this is being played out for TV. And I said, oh, you're doing a cold shoulder too. And you, you too, your friend too? Yes. Yeah, it, you know, this is a big deal. How you doing? We turn up the heat after the show, sorry. We got a fireplace, but um, it's not too warm, if you know what I'm saying. And I think you do, but it is beautiful. Your fireplace. Mm. Cozy. Anyway, so good luck to these two. Um, I, will now be, I will now be watching and for a moment to see you know, what happens. So Kanye is in New York, so the traffic is even worse. <laughs> so you've got the Rockefeller Christmas tree, you've got the most fantastic window displays in the world, world-class shopping, it's holiday, the um, incoming president is here, it's a mess in the streets, and now we add to more of the mess. Here he is. <laughs> All right. Well, there's Kanye with his blonde day. <laughs> yeah, that's not, you know, come on. But give, give, him a, give him a rest. But it, he's very disheveled. And, you know, he's going through things. A minute ago, Kanye was spotted walking um, into the Trump Towers. This is a minute ago, like literally this is hot off the press before off I- the press. All right, this morning, like right before I came out here, he's up, he's awake, and he's walking with Corey Gamble, that's Chris's uh, boyfriend, Corey, and they're going into Trump Towers. And you know what I think that he's probably going to do? Well, first of all, the word um, on the curb is, th is that he's um, a shopping psychiatrist. That's, you know, which is, which is good, you know? He's owning up to whatever's going on with him. And, you know, every, everybody needs a support system somehow. And for him, if a psychiatrist, which, you know, different from a psychologist, you know, psychiatrists, you know, they prescribe the meds. The thing is, is that, have you ever been to a shrink? Psychologist or psychiatrist? Clap if you have. Don't be embarrassed. Well, you know, I've been through things in my life. And while I've never been to a psychiatrist, but I have been to a psychologist, and what I've found is that I have no tolerance for that because I feel in my paranoid mind that they talk at cocktail parties. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is not even TV Wendy, this is radio Wendy, but I was popular, you know what I mean? I went to a black man psychologist who I always felt was leering and looking instead of really listening to what I'm talking to him about. It was very distracting, plus he knew I was on the radio. It just didn't seem professional, you know? So I went like three appointments and I was like, you know what, I'd rather talk to uh, um, Charles about my problems <laughs> or something. I, I, I just, I, I, I can't, like I, like I can't. <laughs> and then I went to a woman who happened to be white, who wasn't really familiar with, I guess, a, a well put together black woman who's coming to her talking about her problems, you know? No, I'm not a baby's mother. Yeah. Yes, I know my father. 
and yes, I graduated with, I have degree. And, and so, so she was like enamored in a different way and I just felt like I didn't feel comfortable with either one of them. But anyway, I don't know how um, he talks to somebody without that person not talking at a dinner party because in my mind, doctors, shrinks and lawyers talk all the time. I've been to enough dinner parties to hear enough of regular people's business that I shouldn't be hearing. Like, why, don't you take a hippopotamus oath? <laughs> I know it's called the Hippocratic Oath, but I'm here to entertain you, so let me do my job. <laughs> anyway, um, but they talk. Anyway, according to People Magazine, um, he is here, uh, uh, excuse me, Kim is annoyed that he is even out of the house. I think that he hasn't rested enough. And I don't believe that this is a fluke. You know, there, there are people out there saying that he's doing this just to, you know, um, get attention or whatever. I don't believe that. I believe that Kanye is in, is in the perils right now. And, you know, shopping for a psychiatrist while he does business here in New York is a good move. But I also feel by seeing him go to Trump Tower about, you know, 15 minutes ago, he, I bet you he's gonna perform at the inauguration. <laughs> and when he's on the stage, he's gonna go left. <laughs> Mark my words. And that's it. We've got more great show. From the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Lisa Renna is here. We love Lisa. But up next, it's time for Celebrity Fan Out. So grab a snack and come on back. Thanks.